توماس توماس آر یو هیر Hello. Okay, thank you. Hi, Kiwi. Hi. Hi, Tevi. How are you? Fine. Okay. Co-organizer. Hi, Pablo. Are you here? We cannot find Thomas. Thomas. Hi everyone. Hi. Hello. This is uh, I'm Radio. I'm online. Hi. Hi. Hui,你现在把那个就是Thomas找出来了吗? From Inba 我还没找到他,没找到他呢。你不是可以那个search吗? 对,就是... PA 我我跟你说说进去。好,Pablo什么 我觉得先让大家改名字吧 I think uh, maybe we can suggest all the participants to rename uh, first name because we, uh, we only have four minutes to start the meeting Yeah, sure And another speakers, Professor Song Ye Hao and Christian has not have not arrived. Jingwei can can you Yes I will Professor Song Ye Hao is has not. Yeah. He answered. Oh yes. Hi, Professor Song. Hello. Uh, Koei. Mm? 
。Evid 说，让他就是呃看一下这个各位 co-host 的这个脸，认一下。那个宋老师是哪位啊？我没找到他，是是这这一个。宋老师说的话，就那个发一个。你可以那个，就是我，你就 search 嘛，就搜一下宋宋老师的那个，都在里边嗯，我在搜。宋叶宋老师吗？嗯。宋老师刚才在聊天里面回复了。哦，呃，我呃知道，就让我们的那个，嗯嗯嗯，可以了。我给你等会儿全都介绍一下 ，David 认一遍得了。好，嗯，现在还有还有老师在练习的吗？呃，我同事正在设置。宋老师已经设置好了，宋老师。啊，应该应该马上可以了。嗯，嗯。好，好了是吧 ？Hi, hello, I'm here. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Christian is here. Uh, Christian, there. Christian, Christian. So, uh, he, he, that, 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 说吧。Hello. Hello. Everyone, yeah, yeah, I'm here. Uh, yeah. I, I think yeah. all the speakers are here. Oh. Uh, we, we cannot see your see your face, Christian. Yes. Uh huh. Great. Well. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think we can start the meeting. Before the meeting, I would like to remind you to change your nickname to name, country, organized name to allow all the participants recognize you, and uh, please choose the right language you uh, you need. We provide English and Spanish, and uh, third one. Uh, remain your camera and uh, microphone <coughs> off all the time. And uh, for all the participants, please click chat button to open the chat page to type uh, messages. So uh, right now we will start the meeting. Uh, please to stop the sharing. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, well. Warm greetings from Beijing. Welcome in war to participate the International Online Seminar Bamboo, a very sustainable construction material. My name is Liu Kewei, the coordinator of Global Bamboo Construction Program of the International Bamboo and Return Organization. The seminar is co-organized by INBA and South China Agriculture Un University with the supporting from nine other institutions around the world. In the coming months, we will invite 10 members of INBA Construction Task Force and six other senior bamboo construction experts to present mm. their experience on bamboo construction to all of you. The organizing committee yeah. would like to extend our gratitude for your attendance at the opening as well as the first session of the seminar. First of all, let me introduce our distinguished guests and speakers. When I introduce your name, please kindly open your microphone and say hello to all the participants here. Ali Muchumu, Director General of INBA, and our DJ is on his duty travel out of Beijing. He will deliver a video speech on behalf of INBA instead. Professor Liu Aihua from South China Agriculture University. Welcome. Everyone. Okay, thank you, Professor Liu Aihua. Dr. David Chukeyo, Chair of INBA Construction Task Force, Assistant Professor and Coventry University. Welcome, David. Hello, everyone. 
Nice to see you. Mr. Marusho Gardenas Naberde, founder of Studio Gardenas Conscious Design from Italy. Welcome, Mar Marusho. Hello to everybody from Milan. So happy to be here. Professor Song Ye Hao, tenure professor of School of Architecture and uh, Tsinghua University, Deputy Chief Architect of Architecture Design and Research Institute of Tsinghua University, co-founder and principal of Soup Atelier from China. Welcome, Professor Song Ye Hao. Hi. Hello, everyone. Very nice to meet you. Mr. Christian Sanadana, Principal Architect of Sangi Architects from the Philippines. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Good evening. There are also several speakers and moderators of the next four sessions and representatives from South China Agriculture University whom I will not name individually. Welcome you all. Uh, dear participants, now let's welcome the video speech delivered by our DG uh, from Inba. Excellencies, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, warm greetings from Beijing. I'm honored and delighted to deliver the opening speech for this new seminar series, Babu, a very sustainable construction material. This year, in response to the ongoing COVID-19 situation, INBA has developed a number of online webinars to discuss Babu and Rata's importance for more sustainable development. In particular, how we can build back better following the pandemic. I'm proud to say that so far, INBA has organized some 40 webinars, which have attracted more than 5,000 participants and have been seen almost 30,000 times online. This webinar series, which focuses on the architectural and structural use of bamboo, covers a very critical global issue. Over the course of five sessions, we will invite six senior experts from around the world to share the latest developments in bamboo construction. By the end of the course, we hope you will be all gain uh, a greater awareness of the bamboo's potential to alleviate the world's acute housing crisis as a low-cost form of construction and as part of the development of the zero emission green cities. Since this is a very specific survey in 1997, Hilba has been promoting Babo as an environmentally friendly substitute for other building materials. We work in partnership with public and private sectors, carry out research, develop technologies, and recommend policies and studies. In 2014, we established the Inbound Community Task Force, a global group of experts who promote communication between government agencies, research institutes, and commercial agencies. Ten experts from this task force will be taking part in this uh, seminar series, explaining the latest information about public construction. I trust you will find the discussion educational uh, and inspiring. Finally, I would like to extend my gratitude to South uh, China Tech University for organizing this construction seminar series with uh, their support and the support of all other institutions and universities is recognized with great gratitude. Dear participants, in closing, I would like to wish you all success for this related journey and hope you will uh, leave this seminar uh, uh, series inspired by the potential of Mambu. Thanks for the video speech of our DG. Inba appreciates the supporting from the South China Agriculture University to co-organize the seminar with us. Now welcome Professor Liu Aihua to deliver the speech. Thank you for your instruction. I can start now? Yes, please. Okay. Your Excellencies, Mr. Ali Makimo, Dr. 
David Trejeno, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, all the participants from around the world. It is my great pleasure to deliver the opening speech during the International Online Seminar on Bamboo Construction. On behalf of the South China Agricultural University, we are very glad to co-organize this academic seminar with IMBA to promote the discussion on bamboo construction with global researchers and designers. Although we cannot gather together physically during the pandemic, we are trying very hard to set up this communication platform for all the participants from around the world who are interested in bamboo construction. As you know, bamboo is one of the fastest growing species on Earth, which has been used in buildings for thousands of years. Bamboo's relatively light weight and high natural strength makes it an excellent construction material. The South Chen Agricultural University is located in Kandong Province, China, where the climate is very good for the growth of bamboo. Together with the People's Government Guangyi County, one of the top 10 bamboo seeds in China, we established the Guangdong Qingpi Bamboo Engineering Technology Research Center in 2016. Since then, the numerous researches and the developments have been carried out. Some of the research results have been successfully applied to the practical projects. In less than 10 years, China has released many policies to promote the development of bamboo industry. As a low carbon, energy saving, climate smart material for construction, we believe that the utilization of bamboo in construction sector will greatly help to mitigate the emission of carbon dioxide for the world. The South China Agricultural University would like to invite global researchers to work with us in the near future to contribute the sustainable development of global bamboo construction sector. Finally, for all the participants, please allow me to give, give our hearty welcome to all of you present at the opening of the sem seminar. I sincerely hope you all have good discussions here in the coming session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Liu Aihua. Uh, right now, we uh, we want to invite our uh, my colleague uh, Pablo from Latin Office to explain to those Spanish participants how to choose uh, language. Pablo. Pablo. Pablo, can you hear me? Uh, if Pablo cannot, Pablo, can, can you? We cannot hear you. Sorry, uh, maybe we can, uh, we will go to the next phase. Thank, thanks to Professor Liu Aihua. And the seminar is mainly supported by members of Inba Construction Task Force. 
which is an expert group consisting of 31 senior bamboo construction experts from 18 countries. Let's invite the chair of Inba Construction Task Force, Dr. David Chuheyo, to deliver the speech on behalf of Inba Construction Task Force. Welcome, David. Thank you, Kawei. Dear Ali Mukumo, Director General of Imba, Professor Aihua Liu from South China Agricultural University, dear panelists, Mauricio Cardenas La Verde, Professor Song Yehao, and Christian Salandanan, dear members of the virtual audience. According to the IPCC, a 1.5 degrees centigrade increase in annual global temperature will place tremendous stress on numerous natural, human, and managed systems. For example, such a temperature increase is projected to cause a decrease of up to 90% in coral reefs. In other words, the loss of a whole ecosystem, an unspeakable tragedy, and an unspeakable tragedy in itself, which is compounded by the terrible suffering this loss will inflict on millions, hundreds of millions of people. Yet, a 1.5 degree centigrade increase is the best case scenario being considered. To achieve this scenario and avert even worse scenarios, the speed and depth of the changes that must be made can only be qualified as a revolution. To pretend that the challenge can be addressed solely by making efficiencies or minor challenges to our behavior is irresponsible. I will stress my point. The world economy has to change as deeply as it did during the Industrial Revolution and in as little time as it did during either of the world wars. In this new economy, we must conceive a construction industry that treats carbon-intensive materials such as steel, cement, and fired clay bricks as a luxury, not a regular commodity. Ironically, the manufacturers of these materials busy themselves trying to persuade us that their materials are indeed sustainable. The choice of name for this seminar is intended to highlight that bamboo is a truly sustainable construction material in the broad sense of the word. Personally, I believe that no other construction material can match its combination of environmental services, rapid growth, and strength. I believe that unlike other construction materials, its supply chain has a potential to distribute wealth instead of concentrating it. Some may ask, if bamboo is so good, why aren't we using it more? This is a fair question for which I only have a partial answer. I suppose there are many hurdles that need to be cleared. For nearly six years, the Inbar Bamboo Construction Task Force has been working towards clearing some of those hurdles. We seek to enable and promote bamboo as a construction material worldwide. This seminar reflects a part of what we achieved in this period. The seminar will reflect the state of the art in the fields of bamboo architecture and bamboo engineering. Significantly, it will also show the broad scope of application ranging from the minimally transformed bamboo, bamboo combs to the very versatile engineered bamboo products. Thank you for joining us. Hopefully, our work will fill you with optimism about the outlook for bamboo and persuade you about its extraordinary potential. As I said, there are many hurdles to clear. Please join our effort and help grow the new economy. Thank you. Thanks, David. After the opening, we will go to the first session now, Architectural Use of Bamboo Combs. In the first session, we will invite three distinguished architects to share their experience on architectural design of bam run bamboo structures in different countries. Each of them will deliver their presentation within 20 minutes, respectively. Then we will have a panel discussion around one hour. 
First of all, we would like to invite Mr. Marusho Gardenas Nabelde. His topic is conscious design bamboo architecture. Marusho's concern about the impact of the construction on the environment lead him to develop the conscious design method during his PhD in Milano Politecnico. He is leader in innovative bamboo architecture with more than 15 years experience using round pole bamboo. Awarded Italy of Innovators by the Innovation Agency of Italian Government and the 2019 Best International Sustainable Architecture Practice by UK Build Magazine. His bamboo designs of various sizes are in different geographical locations. The most uh, recent are the bamboo, Imba Bamboo Eye Pavilion, largest bamboo structure in northern China, and the bamboo flower in the central courts of the largest bamboo labyrinths in the world. Now, welcome Marusho. Hi, Marusho. Oh my God, something uh, wrong with the electricity of her house, uh, of his house. So maybe we, it's okay? Marusho? So maybe we can move to the next uh, uh, speaker, uh, Mr. Song Ye Hao. Uh, Professor Song Ye Hao is from China. He's uh, the designer of Imba, another Imba Pavilion in the coming 2021 Yangzhou Horticulture Expo. His topic is sustainable design of bamboo architecture in China. Professor Song is an architect, researcher, and educator. He is the co-founder and principal of Soup Atelier, the director of the Institute of Architecture and Technology and Tsinghua University, and the Secretary General of the Chinese Green Building Committee. Professor Song has been concentrating on sustainable theory and design for over 20 years while highly promoting the combination of modern design and vernacular architecture in China. For his work, he received awards from all over the world, including the Gold Medal and Arc Asia Award of Architecture, the Engineering Prize of the World Architecture Festival 2019, the Archetizer A Plus Award, and etc. Welcome, Professor Song Yehao. Hello. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 hello, everyone. It's an honor to be here to, to share some experience for, for uh, using bamboo as construction materials in several small projects. And I will share my screen. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. So I just start. Actually, I, I just want to introduce some several projects by my office. We did it in mainly in China, actually. So first is a, a village lounge in Shangchun, on in Anhui province. It is in a traditional Chinese small village in the Yangtze River. <laughs> near Hangzhou and also for the villagers. You can say that the context, urban context of the village. I, I, I do. Oh, that's the site. Yeah, it's kind of, it's a, a abandoned traditional Chinese courtyard with gray bricks and gray tiles, but abandoned. You can see that, like a the war bombed. And our team just turned it into this kind of public space 
for the villagers. For the tourists, house and open, open space for the public. So you can say traditional Chinese is something enclosed for you know for security for 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 the protection of the big families, this kind of thing. But with bamboo, this atmosphere changed from enclosed to open, and also. Is turned from kind of private space to public, so a lot more villagers could gather there, and they could kind of face a village face. They, they just eat and talk together. They can do something together, and also from a very heavy tune with the dark color into kind of natural color of bamboo. So the lightness and heaviness. Kind of contrast. So, before that, actually, no public space in that village,、mm, except temples or other things. We actually are lack of kind of public space, like plazas, everywhere in European cities or towns. But in China, we have to figure it out to find some space for for villagers. So we we turn it from private, heavy, into open and light space for public. So it's kind of ruined or abandoned house, and then to public small square plaza, and also with small. Villagers on public activities like that may do something together. Even seeing karaoke got the the place, yeah, for amusement. So originally something like that, we reinforced the can bring walls and then just. And it's also in harmony with the original, the context of the the village. Actually, it's very hard to tell well, well, what's the new part of that, in spite of the fact that bamboo. Actually, also, you can say that the bamboo forest was there, but it's it's kind of new thing for villagers and also for the village to to be there as kind of construction material. But still, in kind of harmony, we we just do a lot more, a lot more strategy to to make it, to make it in whole. And you can, it's not, it's kind of contrast. The openness and also the largest of it, the same. That's、uh, the launch. Yeah, it's 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 not big. With six bamboos, bamboo umbrellas, actually, we can we formed three units, modular thing, six modulars into three groups of roof. So it, it, we made it. Makes this like that because that very bend and very easy work on site only. Yeah, so we make it six umbrellas. So that's the villagers. You can from the section if you、uh, if you architects you can. It, it shows the the terrain of the abandoned. Uh, 
family house and us, but not exactly the same thing. The height difference just kind of corresponding to the urban design principles. So we can see the openings, we can see from left to right, and the height turn high because of uh, their A's, a very interesting entrance for an old house. So we're making full use of the surrounding surrounding relics, I would say. So that's uh, the detailing. Yeah, bamboo is not a, it's, a, it's kind of, you know, material that's very, very nice. We can make it very easily without difficulties, even without the heavy mechanics. We just, with manpower, we can do almost all the things. Yeah, it's quite easy. Yeah, you, you can see uh, the workers do some of the works. Actually, it's off-site, off the site, but still you can do something. If something needs to be modified, you can do something manually. So no crane, no such kind of Mainly, the material is to be dealt with. And also, for that, we, we try to, to encourage all the villagers to be part of the workers for with printers arrive from the construction site, not so far away. In the, in the context of China, you know, two hours drive is almost nothing. But with all the different colors of the t-shirts, they are villagers. They are not professional workers. Yes, they, they have kind of skill as carpenter, as the, that, that region, a lot more villagers have kind of skill. Uh, they can do something for themselves. We just encourage them to do something for themselves, for the future, for the village. Yeah, that's that's for you know that's for them, not for other people. So they do they collect all the small gray tiles, and also the stone, and also do some some all this kind of work, all by themselves. The villagers, and you can say, okay, there's something new in there, but still in harmony with the old old context. I will. I'm, I'm always glad to describe this as kind of a box without glass. You can say, oh, okay, you, you sit in the lounge. Yeah, you can, you can hear almost everything happening around you. Yeah, and smoking, it's kind of blinding in the environment. Totally. So that, that's, that's something Bamboo helped us to, to achieve this kind of effect. With the reinforcement, definitely it's kind of concrete work. Also done by the villagers themselves. So you can see, okay, also kind of harmony with the traditional Chinese gray dark wall. <laughs> I'm quite gratitude. to they did great bamboo work so nice. So you can see also the, the, the tiles, the small gray tiles were laid by the villagers. So in a traditional way, in the, so that why in harmony with the, the context of the village, just because of a lot more local techniques were adopted to, to that small building. And also the of the villagers, we are, we are trying to, the villagers own this small bamboo lounge. So they, they are the owner of that small thing. And by the villagers, they can say they, they, they did a lot more jobs, great jobs. Yes, we would do kind of social statistics. So this, the data told us almost 20% of the villagers 
uh, were engaged in the big construction work. And also definitely for the villagers, they can do something, what is it like, just they, they have just a public space. They can do everything. They are kind of reorganized uh, or they can just do for amusement or for to, to face the, the, the distinguished guests or a lot more things, even the movie night. So, Lunch, uh, yeah. So they call it text. Oh, we call it actually it's a, the pavilion in the Beijing Forest University. Yeah, that's in Beijing and not in rural area. Also, a small pavilion with bamboo. We just make band aid to a kind of like just a, like a swirling cloud you know, just flowing over there, <laughs> covering the, the whole landscape. So we do, firstly, also we do the modification of the side. Because original side is kind of innate to do something new for that. We covered with some water it penetrates into back to the earth and also with all the openings according to the surroundings and with bamboo beam and also with a lot more uh, different uh, structural systems. Also, uh, many materials, bamboo and also bamboo tile and also PM. The memory kind of transparent memory. The man wrote right here, the, the, the uh, for acoustic reason, towards one of the people to there. The second biggest toward the, the, the research building a lot more people will, will go from there to this and also for children so this kind of small one and also you can see that memorial stone the, the bushes towards research building towards campus and acoustic wall so that's the basic for this small thing so we curve it we bend it again <laughs> the span opening this material so that's it and also totally construction with bamboo yeah bamboo great bamboo raw bamboo so that's uh, the diagram to show okay how this small thing is made and also definitely we need this kind of analysis, structural analysis to say the displacement and is the load distribution. The well, itself will not move for sure, but the song Stop. moves. Sorry, Professor Song, I... Oh, I um, uh, Yeah, I just uh, speed up. Ah, uh, yes, five I, minutes. So I, I just show the slide. Okay. I just show the slides. Okay. I just students and professors and even the children. Yeah. Yeah, the small 
smallest gate for different a bundle structure for for a market. In rural of China, so we try to you know, engage, we transform and um, research on that, and it sounded going and will be done in, in several days. Also, it's rammed earth. Uh, that, that's mission. Yeah, that's uh, a lot is for FOM by Pavilion, yeah, by Miss Liu, yeah, introduced. So that that's that's kind of fish. You know, fish for Chinese always fish like pavilion. Mm -hmm. And also try to make it elegant and making full use of bamboo to bend it and curl it and okay. Hello, Kuei. Can you hear me? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, Thanks, uh, uh, Professor you. Song. Yeah. Yes, because of the problem of the internet, your voice sounds like piano or saying something. But thank you for your uh, your ex excellent uh, <laughs> presentation slides. Uh, uh, your four interesting cases completed in different locations and village campus uh, and public garden. So we are very glad to see that more and more local outstanding architects in China represented by Professor Song are starting to rethink to use bamboo, this traditional natural material in modern ways. So uh, we believe that one day we could use bamboo in the large span or high rising buildings in the near future. So uh, next uh, we will invite Mr. Marusho to return back to show his uh, projects. Welcome Marusho. Hello, everybody. I'm sorry, but something that never has happened happened today, of course. That's kind of a, the electricity in all of the neighborhood just dropped down and it was kind of panic. I made you have panic as well, Kiwi, I imagine. And thank you, Professor Song, for starting to, to start and, and changing places with me. Uh, I want to thank you, thank Imvar very much for this uh, this um, organization and all of the task members, which I'm part of. Uh, so I think it's a great to be able to share our knowledge, uh, and uh, I will start presenting my my projects so that we can use our time as better as possible. So here I am. Can you see it? Can you see it on the whole screen? Yes. Okay, yes. Love. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'll try to respect time as best as possible. I'll have to go a little fast, excuse me, for that. And uh, so I'll start just with our World Economic Forum. As you can see, this is the first time, this is the, the Global Risk Report from 2020. And this is the first time in the, in the history of, of the, um, the World Economic Forum report that environment is is the all of the risks are related to the environment so the risk of extreme weather of climate action failure natural disasters biodiversity loss and human-made environment disasters or all, all have to do with them all, all of the all of the um, risks for for the next years are, are linked to to the environment and and but alongside with the risks then this ne next decade brings tremendous opportunities we've seen that the sustainable development goals are are, are supporting this this um, challenge and a renewed interest in natural based solutions can help combat climate change as well as to mitigate the exacerbating effects of nature loss on the climate 
And bamboo is a strategic natural resource for this. Only bamboo is a plant tackles seven of, of the 17 sustainable development goals adopted by United Nations member states for the 2030 agenda for sustainable development. There's no poverty, affordable and clean energy, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action and life on land. And bamboo is a very positive investing from this point of view, right? Because construction process is one of the biggest culprits when it comes to global greenhouse emissions. So us architects and developers, clients, politicians, engineers, construction companies, universities, we all have a very big responsibility towards the future of the planet. It is believed that bamboo can save the planet. In fact, thanks also to Inbar, bamboo is considered a, a, nat a strategic natural uh, resource for tackling the climate change. And as, as we all know, bamboo absorbs carbon dioxide and releases 35% more than oxygen into the atmosphere. And it will grow very, very fast, much fa faster than hardwood trees. And from the construction point of view, it's a ready to use product of nature. And that's why I will we'll talk about a round pole bamboo, which is a not, not using bamboo and its natural characteristics. This is what I envision as a, as a bamboo building ecosystem Bamboo can, can become the new industry of the future, the green economy. And, uh, and this has, is very um, parallelly with the philosophy of my office since 2004, actually since the PhD, uh, 1999 to 2003, I developed this philosophy, which is the, the base of the, the work of my office, that I believe, rather, I believe in awareness rather than sustainability because it's an attitude with which to face the creative process of design. I consider that energy saving through technology is the, in the context of environment crisis is not enough. And that's what is happening now. And Studio Cardenas conscious design commitment is not to leave the impo this important responsibility to change mitigation only to technology. Conscious design is based on the use of tangible and intangible natural materials, including natural light, sun heat, natural ventilation, plants, bamboo, of course. We focus on the processes and application of natural materials for construction. In the first place, bamboo, which we believe is a product of nature that best integrates the values of ecology, community, community nutrition, and beauty. For more than 15 years, together with my team, I've been experimenting, doing research, prototypes, developing construction techniques, applying this know-how for practical design solutions, focusing on innovative and sustainable contemporary architecture using round pole bamboo. Contemporary architecture, this is an important, an important thing. And you can see since 2008, we have been receiving in Italy, which is supposed to be not a, a bamboo country, but since, since then have been receiving several awards nationally and internationally for, for bamboo um, architecture. These are some images since I, I even have tried myself that my own my own designs, and as a and I and I and I've become uh, without without pretending a bamboo culture communicator. As you remember, in China and in Italy for bamboo construction competitions, international congress lecturer in several countries of the world. I teach nowadays only the master's level, as I have not too much time to dedicate to teaching, unfortunately. And this year, I'm Italian design ambassador. And I will be, I will be uh, representing Italian design community uh, in Chengdu during this month as an Italian design ambassador. And I'm the scientific creator of the largest bamboo labyrinth in the world, which is in Italy. I've been, I, I, since 2005, I've been writing articles. The first, the first architect and, and, and bamboo lover who wrote articles in, in, in Italy about bamboo as a construction material. And I'm, of course, part of, of Inbar Task Force. That's why I'm here to do, with all of you today. And I thank you, Liu Kewei and David Trujillo for organizing this and all of my colleagues for, for doing such an amazing work as we are pushing bamboo to become a, um, how do you say, um, to, a construction material is all of the others. As today, it, it is not because there's, we, we're, we still don't have the codes for building with bamboo. So I'll start with small scale projects. The first one here in Italy, 2006, was built, and it's uh, 
like here is the first the, uh, with my first project i already demonstrated that bamboo can be contemporary is dry mounted i i build it with my myself with the with students of my design lab and and the and uh, young art from my office we build it ourselves to demonstrate it is easy to build that we don't need um, specialized um, manpower as also because in Italy there is no uh, or there was not a, a specialized manpower at the time as you can see uh, below we can see uh, uh, the conscious design uh, icons for biocompatibility sunscreen modularity rainwater in this case these are these are the the topics we we, we tackle and for the sustainable uh, development goals we tackle number seven number 11 and 12 which are affordable and clean energy sustainable cities and communities and responsible consumption and production so this all started since in the time there was no bamboo available in Italy this all started in in a, in a, in a forest in Colombia where, where my con my origin is from I'm, from I'm I was born in Colombia and uh, as you can see we we're from we're talking 2006 this project already used uh, solar energy temperature control it's modular it in integrates several services solar protection and can can protect from from the rain. I'm here uh, showing the project, discussing the project with two very important ba ba bamboo experts in Colombia, Marcelo Villegas, who has built with Simon Vélez, has built all of the amazing structures uh, uh, Simon Vélez has done designing in his in his uh, life, and um, and also with Gabriel Germán Londoño and Eduardo Madulanda, they own the, the, the largest bamboo, uh, one of the most of the largest bamboo plantations and and this is a design of the of the joint it's a, a very geometrical interesting and easy to mount joint and uh, we'll see what happens with this joint in the future because here is just for building a very simple simple structure uh, here in Milan it respects all of the con construction codes in Milan I had to demonstrate that th this small pavilion uh, respects the codes of construction in Milan so we had to do several testings which we did very, very light, it was easy to mount it on top of the, of the steel uh, vertical supports. And this is the solution. Then we use it, three years after, uh, three years later, we, 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 with using the same bamboo, we cut it into slats and we made this um, with this uh, geodesic cupola in a, in a Renaissance context in the university, State of the University in, in Milan. You can see we did a, a models for understanding, learning, and, and verifying the, the amazing Bagmist Trifuller geometry of the geodesic. Here, uh, I designed a new joint and, and did some prototypes. And these are the type of joints, very simple. Again, no, no perforating the bamboo, uh, no, no cement, just under pressure. as the first joint I, I showed you before. And in the interaction between a natural material, contemporary architecture, in uh, together with the Renaissance building, in fact, the geometries are are, are inspired in, and it's a it's a mixture of tradition, tradition and innovation. They 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 go together. They go all the time together in my work. Now we we are, we are here's a mixture between uh, it's a Ch Chinese client, Vanke. And uh, uh, in Expo Milano 2015, Vanco had their, their, their uh, private pavilion and, um, and uh, they wanted to be, uh, to be built with, with chi Chinese bamboo. So I traveled to, I traveled to Anji uh, region and was uh, selecting the bamboo together with the farmers with, uh, and, and was working with a the community there to, to choose the bamboo, to protect it, to cut it and then bring it back to Milan. Uh, and started a, a, a workshop, starting doing the prototypes, the testing, also to demonstrate not only the, the Milan city codes, but also Expo had a special codes for, for, for security. And we had to pass the test and actually it's the only bam bearing bamboo structure accepted in, in, in uh, Milano uh, Expo. Other, other bamboo constructions had to be um, built in steel and covered with bamboo, but this one was purely bamboo. And this exhibition was very, very interesting. Um, it, 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 demo, it showed a very important part of the Ch Chinese culture for Vanke, which is the Shitang, is the, the 
meeting and eating together. People were place where people can eat, uh, talk together, that it's something that we are actually having trouble today, right? Um, of being able to meet, to socialize, to stay together. And th this uh, concept was exactly like a bamboo forest, uh, talking about the people walking under the bamboo forest and, and, and uh, understanding what is Shi Tang in the Chinese culture, which is um, uh, in, uh, in, the word comes in Italian, the mensa is the, is the, like the cafeteria where people meet to, uh, but not 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 a shop, but the cafeteria for the people. Now um, I will show a medium, so I choose some small and medium and then large size to show the potentialities of bamboo. For the medium, I'll show a, um, a project in in China in ba Baoshi uh, town. It's a small town. You can see it on the left. Um, uh, an artist, an amazing artist from, from Shanghai, uh, Ge Chang Tao, he invited 10 architects. He, he, he wanted us to, to design with bamboo. From Japan, from uh, Keisuke Maeda, uh, there's Ge Chang Tao from China, he's, he's, and Von Trongia from Vietnam, King Okuma from Japan, Anna Herringer from Germany, Li Xiaodong from China, Tsinghua University, Yang Su from China, and he did the master plan. Simon Vélez from Colombia, myself from Italy and Colombia, and Suk Hee Chun from Korea. And here we can see the, the first joint I designed for, for the pavilion. Here I, I took it forward and built a three-story house with no use of, of cement and, and, um, and no perforation of the joints, of the bamboo poles, sorry. So it's, so it's a project that, that the concept behind is a, is, is a bamboo structure that can be... Uh, that can be uh, uh, elements can be replaced. It's like an iPhone. It's like a car. It's it's it's, it's a future. Uh, it's a futuristic project where every piece that it's damaged can be changed, uh, replaced. Can be replaced. Also, as I was talking, conscious design is not just designing with bamboo, but it's also taking into account the, the available natural resources. In this case, the water, underground water, and the underground water, uh, was used for the cooling and the heating. Also, the, um, the natural ventilation is quite important. You can see the, the windows opening, uh, the opening of the windows and, and, and the space between the floors. It's modular as well. So it's a, it's a house that can be changed in time and also can be, can be copied, can be made several, can, can be made several houses. So view of the interior, our, our renders always look to look as close to the reality as possible. You can see the bamboo stairs hanging the proportions, here's the golden proportion as well. So it's uh, east meets west. You can see here the detail. So it's contemporary architecture. And it was built was built by, by, by the local people, the people from Baoshi. There was no specialized man working. It was the first time for them to build with bamboo. Also to build the, the earth, the earth wall you can see on the, on the ground floor is rammed earth and was done also by the by the local people. You can see the bamboo Sorry, forest Marshall. in the background. Five yeah. minutes. Okay, Five. let's go, let's go. So Inbar Garden Pavilion. Here we're going to show the Inbar Garden Pavilion in Beijing last year. It was the first time Inbar had a bamboo pavilion actually. So I'm very uh, lucky and proud to be uh, first uh, Inbar architect to design the a bamboo structure. It's thir 32 meters. Um, um, 30, 32 meters, how do you say, span for the structure. You can see here it's, it's, one, it's the only pavilion which is integrated with the landscape. It's not a pavilion on the ground, but it's a, a, a pavilion in the ground. The, it has earth and has plants at the top, natural ventilation, probably the only pavilion which had no no air conditioning, just just natural natural ventilation. Here you can see the first sketches from July 2018. And uh, the model, uh, a model which was done very fast. And here I have to, to do a little thank you to, to Dr. Lee, who actually is not here with us anymore. And he was a strategic person for the realization of this project. He pushed and supported us. And last October 24th, he did a lecture for, for an event I organized in the largest bamboo uh, labyrinth in the world. He was here with us and I... I thank you forever. Thank him forever for his support. We did uh, um, we did um, a garden 
also all with with bamboo. And here again, you see the proportion, the the golden proportion applied to large structures, designed by the Chongqing uh, University team, the structural team. And we and here we're working together, all people working together, uh, teamwork, uh, Italy, Colombia, China, all together, and we got the largest bamboo structure of North China at the time. Here you can see some more images. The interiors using using a handcraft, typical, traditional. So see tradition and innovation again. Traditional Chinese handcraft using for natural light control. Bamboo eye is called bamboo eye because of the reflection. And I'll show you the last project now. I had some video, but have no time for the video, unfortunately. Ah, uh, the project just recently got the award, Bamboo, a vision of the architecture of the future, where the use of natural materials has a crucial impact in the construction of process and natural environment. The Plan Magazine, a very important award, uh, of the, was a spe of for a special project, was the most voted project, 4,435 votes. And this is the last project, small, we go back to small scale. Small doesn't mean uh, is not good. Here we are in the largest bamboo labyrinth in the world, of which I am a scientific curator for all the events here. And did this small design, but very important because it's the first 100% made in Italy bamboo structure. I used uh, bamboo from an Italian forest and, uh, <clears throat> and was done. This is the geometry studies. Here we see the geometry. It's classical, uh, clean. It, 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 it goes uh, very nicely integrated with the uh, neoclassic uh, architecture of the place. Another video that we sorry, sorry we have to skip. This is the, the bamboo forest here in Italy. In Tus from here, got, uh, got the bamboo. And with these, these people from Bamboo Seto, from, from Tuscany as well, they did all the... Uh, I, I, introduced to them sort of the bending of bamboo from the experience of Inbar Garden Pavilion. And we did this, this uh, amazing little structure, but with a strong message, which is 100%, is the first 100% Italian bamboo, Ita Italian made in Italy uh, design. And I thank you all very much for your attention and uh, looking forward to see you, to see you soon. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, thanks to Marusho's uh, presentation. Marusho has done lots of, uh, has designed many interesting round pole bamboo structures around the world. And ha he also has done lots of the work to promote bamboo as and the, and the structural material to use in different places. We really appreciate his great uh, contribution to Imba Bamboo Eye Pavilion during 2019 Be Beijing Horticulture Expo. And he mentioned that without Dr. Li, our former Deputy Director General, we cannot make such a mm, great uh, achievement. We will uh, miss him forever. So next one, um, we, uh, we will invite the Third speaker, Mr. Mm, Christian Sanadana from Philippines. His topic is bamboo architecture and construction. Christian Sanadana is one of the principal architects of Sangi Architects, a design firm which specializes in bamboo architecture design in the Philippines. A multi awarded architect at a very young age with a mission to uplift the value of bamboo and the building material through design innovation. He is also one of the directors of Bambusa uh, Construction Com Corporation, a construction company which specializes in holistic and uh, technical bamboo construction approach, driving by his passion towards bamboo. He is continuously pushing the the rising of bamboo architecture in the Philippines, one bamboo and time. Welcome, Christian. Hi, everyone. Good, uh, good evening. Wait, let me share my screen. Good evening, everyone. It's really uh, uh, great to be part of uh, this event. 
uh, and to the last speaker, it's really a hands-on team of Richard, really great projects. And so what I'll present uh, now is uh, uh, Bamboo Architecture from uh, our experience as a, uh, as, a de- as a design firm here in the Philippines. So I'd like to start with this word, uh, bamboo. Uh, what do we um, um, remember when we hear the word bamboo? Here in the Philippines, it's always, uh, it's a toothpick, um, it's a hut, and it's for fencing. And um, sad to say, this is uh, the most uh, uh, common uh, misconception about bamboo. It's actually con- uh, conceived as a poor man's uh, material. Meaning, uh, if uh, you offer it to someone, uh, they think that uh, you're poor because uh, it will dictate your social status. But uh, what really is bamboo and uh, what are the potentials for bamboo in the architecture and construction industry? I'd like to uh, show some traditional uh, samples of of how bamboo is utilized here in the Philippines. Uh, this is the famous or famous uh, hut, which is we call uh, the Bahe Kubo. It's um, a structure raised on stilts, and uh, walls and um, uh, structural elements are made out of bamboo, uh, mostly a single story and three meters in height, average. Uh, and then interior cladding, uh, they use a lot uh, with uh, uh, for bamboo. And also fencing, uh, it's really uh, widely uh, known uh, that uh, this material. Now, uh, I'd like to compare uh, some uh, bamboo utilization from other countries. Say, this one is uh, by Botrong uh, in Vietnam, by Botrong Nia Architects. And this one is by Buku Design Group in Indonesia. This one is uh, Simon Veles Church in Latin America. And the Great Hall of Obi by Andri, which is also in Indonesia. So, uh, in terms of uh, comparison, uh, the Utilization here in the Philippines is really way behind uh, with the uh, international uh, practice. And uh, we believe that there's really a big and top potential of, uh, of, uh, with bamboo, especially with uh, bamboo architecture. And uh, we can elevate it. We believe that uh, we can elevate uh, uh, bamboo, the value of it, through uh, good design and correct holistic implementation. Now, uh, let me show you, uh, uh, let me run you through our process on how we uh, design our bamboo spaces. So how do you really craft a space using bamboo? Now, this is our uh, design process. First is, um, uh, it's always um, visualization, experiential visualization in designing, meaning uh, we want to uh, feel the site, uh, what's the temperature, what's the sound, what's the smell, and what are the elements in it, what does it tell you? And say for this uh, project, it's, stand, it's standing in the middle of a lagoon. And it's a yoga pavilion. So you want to maintain the serene ambience and at the same time be surrounded by uh, this uh, circular uh, arrayed uh, structural bamboo base. And uh, say for this church uh, somewhere in uh, El Nido, um, we always ask ourselves what experience they want as you enter the structure. Say, this is uh, the Entrada, uh, it's a Catholic uh, church. And as you go inside, how do you want to feel uh, when you're inside the building? And uh, say for this one, we want something solemn and something uh, hierarch- uh, hierarchy in terms of uh, uh, the experience through the uh, good height ceiling. So it's really um, uh, what we want with bamboo is re- still mixing it with the art, art of uh, designing spaces. It's mixing uh, materials and space planning, not just uh, focusing on the technicality of bamboo alone, but uh, rather combining it to come up with uh, a space that's uh, really uh, uh, usable and um, um, it shows a good experience. And after visualizing the experience, a uh, second step for us is a really great miniature model for design study. And well, we create multiple uh, uh, um, models uh, from schematic uh, for studying uh, how the behavior of uh, uh, the structure is. And um, for this one, these are initial uh, um, models that we develop a long time. And, and uh, after which it's, it's simultaneous work always with creating uh, digital models for uh, structural engineers, especially here in uh, the Philippines where typhoon is really a big issue. Uh, the wind is uh, not a joke here in the Philippines. So uh, this really with uh, high consideration that uh, you go through this uh, process. 
And uh, so these are the collection. Uh, these are uh, some um, scale models that uh, we've done in the office for always for every project. Uh, we create uh, scale models for uh, each site. And then every detail also is uh, important uh, for, for you to realize uh, from design conception to implementation. And uh, we do it through sketches and uh, detailed 3D drawings uh, because 2D drawings is uh, quite uh, complex with, um, with uh, workers, especially those who are not really into uh, building with bamboo. So we really need to create um, uh, detailed 3D models, uh, all possible means for them to uh, uh, visualize and uh, understand the project. And uh, also taking advantage of uh, the digital tools, meaning um, doing all the 3D models say, for, this, uh, for this photo, for this project. On the left side is uh, the digital model we created uh, prior to implementation. And at the same time on the right is uh, the Apple implementation uh, implemented project. So it's really uh, taking advantage of uh, the tools uh, nowadays, the digital means to um, achieve the design that you really want. Uh, also, even going um, with, uh, we're very particular with uh, the lighting as well when uh, designing interior architectural spaces. Uh, we simulate um, all the lights uh, prior to uh, implementation. So uh, the one in the photo again on the left is uh, the night digital visualization through um, um, uh, model in the computer. And then on the right is uh, the actual of how it uh, really looks. And um, after uh, simulating, after running through uh, numerous um, um, analysis and uh, um, uh, design uh, developments, uh, next will always be uh, uh, the material sourcing on site. It's actually one of the most uh, fun uh, part in when uh, building or designing with bamboo. It's really going into the site, uh, selecting uh, species, selecting the poles uh, firsthand, and uh, working with the communities, working on the grassroots level. And uh, it's really um, uh, important because there's a lot of uh, uh, species in the, the Philippines. This is one of the most uh, famous, is the Kauaian tinik. Uh, but uh, one of the challenges, you cannot go uh, uh, for long, uh, on a continuous length uh, if you want a, a good uh, height ceiling. That's why in some projects, it's a, it's a mix of uh, this Dendrocalamus uh, asper giant uh, for uh, full height requirements. And... Um, for short uh, continuous span requirements, uh, we go for bamboo sublumiana. And uh, ex also exploring uh, regional uh, species, uh, say this one is uh, from Visayas, uh, it's a uh, botong patong uh, that they call. And also uh, creating, uh, selecting uh, the right uh, volume, the right uh, thickness uh, for you to, uh, for your spaces. And then uh, one of the most important uh, part really is, again, the treatment process, because if uh, left untreated, the lifespan of uh, bamboo is uh, way below for seven years. And another uh, practice, we really uh, take uh, good care of uh, bamboo if from uh, cutting uh, to storing, um, really uh, give it uh, a good uh, enough space and uh, storage uh, area that uh, it really can breathe. And um, proper storage and staffing is really important because infestation can really occur on the first uh, week or first uh, few weeks of uh, uh, when you cut it. And uh, of course, uh, the diaphragm penetration. So when you do uh, the dipping method, um, it's always um, until the inner uh, part of the bamboo. And the uh, angle drying of uh, bamboo poles, this is uh, on our um, um, factory uh, somewhere in, uh, in Luzon, in Rizal. And uh, so we allotted a space uh, just for uh, bamboo treatment, just for uh, from harvesting to storing uh, treated poles and untreated poles. And the construction part is um, actually is the very fun part where uh, you implement this uh, collective process of uh, designing, say from uh, doing the details, um, experiencing the site, uh, designing all uh, the 3D digital um, part. And it's where your material preparation uh, turns into reality. And uh, for us, one of uh, the very first uh, parts uh, for every project and um, is always uh, doing mock-ups uh, for bamboos. Say the one on the right is um, um, doing a mock-up for uh, multiple um, uh, bamboo connected at one point. Then the left is uh, an ongoing project that we're doing for 
uh, an office. It's an uh, exploration of uh, um, bundling uh, poles and slats at the same time. So it's really first doing the mock-ups uh, involving the workers on the process and assessing after um, what works best and uh, after all uh, possible testing as well. Say so this is uh, one of uh, those um, uh, current bamboos to assess uh, the capacity of the workers uh, as to how long they'll do it and all. And um, also the scale model that I showed a while ago really uh, gives a lot of um, importance uh, during the construction phase because not all uh, workers, especially in the Philippines, um, understand um, this uh, complex uh, bamboo structures. They're just used to um, doing uh, the basic uh, hot type. So uh, what we've uh, observed and um, um, learned is uh, this 3D models really helps them to uh, understand uh, where each pole will be going, uh, how many poles is connected on each part and all. And also determining the best methodology uh, during the implementation phase is uh, uh, really important. Say, uh, how will you store your bamboo um, on site? Uh, where do you, do you fabricate it off site and then you just bring it uh, to assemble? And those are the things that uh, you decide, say. And um, another thing is um, uh, that we're really, really uh, uh, glad to experience is uh, local workers, say, there are a lot of uh, people joining. Um, new some uh, some new workers joining our team, and then experiencing um, working with bamboo together with uh, the skilled uh, bamboo craftsmen, and eventually after uh, project per project, uh, they are really uh, proud uh, to learn and adapt uh, new bamboo skills and techniques to actually realize that uh, these structures really can uh, can withstand or uh, can be uh, made possible here in the Philippines. And um, say so this one is another um, example of a, a residential, an actual a residential house somewhere in uh, Bulacan, where uh, we used, uh, it's a mixture of uh, cement until roof beam and then all bamboo supporting uh, uh, the roof. So the design intent here is really from the roadside. Uh, there's no other element, but just uh, to highlight uh, this uh, full glass uh, enclosed uh, structure. And uh, this is uh, the recently um, um, uh, finished. Uh, a while ago, the process I showed you is actually uh, for this uh, recently finished uh, Polo Pavilion project. This is a viewing deck uh, built somewhere in uh, Batangas. And uh, the purpose of it is um, really to, uh, to cater uh, the VVIPs, the uh, sultans and kings of uh, Brunei and Malaysia, and uh, one of the other things that really um, made us uh, uh, happy and proud is the client wants uh, the, the the project brief was to create something um, uh, to create something to cater for the VVIPs for the kings and sultans, but using this performance material, which is bamboo. So it's really uh, we're really happy because it's really aligned with our vision to uh, uplift uh, the value of uh, bamboo here in the Philippines to. Uh, change um, the notion of uh, how uh, people see bamboo. When they, so when they see bamboo, uh, they won't associate it with uh, being poor or uh, for socialized uh, housings and all. And and um, so this, uh, say this is uh, the interior uh, of the project. And uh, this is the view towards the polo playing field. So the building is uh, uh, elevated through uh, a pedestal, a three meters high concrete pedestal. And on top of it is uh, where Bamboo Trust is sitting. And connections are uh, made out of um, uh, bolts and mortar. And uh, it's uh, made out of bundled. So this is a, a series of um, uh, trust type uh, showing, uh, showing the uh, one, one side or one face of the building. And the idea of uh, it is uh, this is a 12 uh, meters height uh, structure. So it's nine uh, nine meters continuous poles. Uh, the uh, since the pedestal is uh, three meters, and uh, we're really uh, happy because uh, during the event, uh, uh, the people are uh, the reaction uh, are really oh this is really possible with uh, bamboo. Uh, I don't uh, I cannot believe that uh, uh, you can build something like this uh, with bamboo. So uh, those are the things that uh, really is one of our um, uh, vision for people to actually uh, realize the 
potential, uh, the untapped potential of. Sorry, Chris G. Five minutes left. Yeah, and uh, so this is uh, the en- the entrance um, the entrance portion of uh, this building, and the intent of this is um, uh, we lower the height at the entrance so as not to create an int- intimidation in terms of experience uh, when uh, when you're approaching the site. So you'll still go on this uh, lowly entrance, and then as you as you enter, that's the only time that uh, you see the uh, full height. And also with design intent, uh, we want to mix it with uh, contemporary materials always, such as uh, glass, uh, um, concrete, and steel stucco, so as to uh, come up with um, a design that's uh, not too uh, pure in terms of uh, indigenous material and uh, for design acceptance also, for social acceptance. And so this is uh, actually the last um, um, photo of uh, my presentation just in time. Thank you for listening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Chris Jane, sharing uh, for the development of bamboo construction in the Philippines and show us so many uh, fantastic bamboo structures uh, uh, in his country. And uh, according to his introduction, he mentions he mentioned so many key issues uh, for how to use bamboo and the construction material, like supply of raw materials, selection of bamboo spaces, uh, treatment and preservation, uh, as well as connections. I think I think these key issues are those issues uh, maybe many participants here uh, are concerning. So we will move to the next session to carry out more uh, discussions uh, Devi, uh, I will hand over to you. Devi will moderate the next session, panel discussion. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Kiwe. Um, so I'm going to explain the mechanism of how we're going to handle fundamentally the, the, the discussion. Fundamentally, you've been raising questions as we have been in the presentations. And I will be picking some of those questions I had. We had originally envisaged that we would contact each one of you, but I, I feel that it'd be more efficient because we've got a lot of questions that I read them out. I hope that's okay and acceptable with you. Um, I also wanted to say that we will be running into for the next 38 minutes, if so, uh, through the questions and about... Uh, Within those 38, 37 minutes now, uh, then we will um, wrap the session to an end. Okay, so I um, I think I'm going to start with a question for all panelists um, that reflects several questions that have re- been raised in different ways, which is about species. I think it's very interesting to see that you've all worked with different species. So could I ask um, that the three panelists tell us their ex- uh, the, very briefly their experiences of working with the different species, which species have they found that uh, provides them the best performance? Um, have they noticed any experiences that are unique to each species or have they sort of felt that it's uh the same to work with all species uh regardless so i will handle over hand over to song Yi Hao first professor if you could um tell us a bit about your experience. Uh, uh, okay thank you Javis. yes actually we are working with kind of uh, bamboo um, manufacturers Actually, we do not decide which kind of species we are dealing with. They, they are in charge of that part. They recommend kind of bamboo and treat it. Not raw bamboo, not raw bamboo, treat it uh, just against, um, for, interesting, for, for, for instance, against uh, the water, waterproof thing or against uh, the, um, this kind of problem with bamboo. So pre-treated bamboos, they provided to us and we just do the, the rest of the design work and 
Definitely, we do some kind of detailings together with the manufacturers. Okay, David. Thank you, uh, Mauricio. Yeah, thank you, David. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Well, I, I've, I've um, worked with three main species based on the location and the geographical location of the projects. And I have I have chosen them. Uh, I have chosen them personally uh, because because they are the best uh, the best ones uh, that I found in each place. For example, in Colombia, I've used Guadua angustifolia that we all know about it, and and I actually imported Guadua angustifolia from Colombia here to Italy at the beginning, two thousand five, six, seven, and eight. Then uh, I I I got to I. Uh, had the opportunity to know the Philostachys pubescens and the Mao Tzu from from uh, China. Uh, I, I used Mao um, for the exhibition, uh, the Wanke exhibition here in Milan, uh, and uh, I used Philostachys pubescens for the Inbar Pavilion. And I chose uh, for the last project the, the bamboo flower, the one I did here in the labyrinth. I used. Uh, the labyrinth has more than 20 species of bamboo, uh, but I but I chose to use a bamboo from Tuscany because um, there is, a, is a, a, a species where I'm working together with the University of Bologna for studying its properties, and it's called the Philostachys edulis. Um, so I, I, I in the I book I wrote a book in 2008, a, a construction manual in Italian, and I, I learned from 30 species of of bamboo that it's uh, available for construction or at least a well known, but I, I have only used four types until now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. And Christian, can you tell us a bit about your experience of the bamboo species you've worked with? Okay. Um, for us, uh, we work with just three types uh, of uh, bamboo here in the Philippines on our, well, on my experience. Is, uh, those are Dendrocalamus asper, uh, Blumiana, and uh, Dendrocalamus uh, latiflorus. And it's, uh, the reason for it is uh, because of uh, the supply. And the um, uh, Philippines is divided into uh, thousands of islands. And, uh, but uh, really the most uh, common uh, bamboo that uh, you can find uh, on uh, almost uh, everywhere in, in, in all parts of the Philippines is uh, Blumiana. So... Uh, Say if there are projects on um, um, each space, the first thing that we really check is uh, the, the availability of um, um, the supply. If uh, one species is around, and um, will it be possible? But because one that's also one of the challenge also here in the Philippines is sourcing um, uh, bamboo because uh, there's no uh, commercial uh, plantation or a massive plantation. It's located on different areas, so you need to strategically plan all the logistics and all. So. But basically, with uh, with um, uh, the species, it's uh, those two or two, three uh, the dendro dendrocalamus uh, um, parts and uh, the bamboos of Domiana. Okay, thank you very much, Christian. So um, I have I'll be moving now to some more uh, specific questions to each of one of the panelists. Uh, I have I'm combining two questions for Mauricio regarding interest in your connections. So the first one is from Nareswaro Nugroho from Indonesia, IPB. And he, the question is, the connection system developed is really interesting. Can these joints be used for different bamboo diameters or specifically with a certain diameter range? I will complement this question with another one that someone has raised which is, uh, what is the padding on the joint? Is it a foam? This was raised by Aliohi Nyan from the Gambia. Yes, uh, so uh, the, the, joint, the, uh, the joint can be, uh, it can be used for bamboos from 6 to 12 centimeters of diameter because that's, that's like the range that I have. I, I, at the time of the design of the joint and until now, so it's, 15 years ago when I designed the joint and until now has, I haven't had the chance to use bigger or smaller bamboos for that type of joint. Um, and uh, uh, regarding the foam, yeah, it's, it's, um, 
I, I use, uh, uh, it's for, how do you call it, for diving. It's a neoprene, a high density neoprene that it's used for very deep diving because it's uh, this, uh, doing the testing that's the best I found for, that it's good for n not breaking the bamboo, but at the same time for not making the, the bamboo to sleep, to sleep, how to say, to be slippery. Uh, that's it, yeah. Okay. So I have now a question for um, Professor Yao. This is from Alexandra Toivonen in the UK at Leo One. And she said, Hi, I have a question for Song Ye Hao. Regarding the first project he presented, the public canopy in Sangun, how was the roof how were the roof beams bent? Using an active technique or some other bending technique? And I have also for you, Professor, a second question, which is from Ale Mayedu Darje from Ethiopia, from EIABC. This says, could you explain more about the roofing cover you've used? Is it bamboo? How is the climate of the area and how does the water drain? So if you could address those questions, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, firstly, all the bamboos uh, are, we just print out one to one, you know, mock-up thing, and the, the workers will bend it with heat. You, you know, heat it. Uh, very, you know, it's not advanced technique, you know, just heat it and then bend, but just follow straight with heat. And that question is quite interesting. For the first project about the, the village lounge, it's kind of asphalt shingles, you know, just kind of black tiles, but, you know, much lighter. Second, we have, we have uh, underneath the, the bamboo tiles, we have waterproof membrane. So that, that's for, for the water, for the rainwater waterproof thing, okay? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a series of questions for Christian. Um, so one of these is from Aleli Arofol from the UAA and the Philippines Institute of Architecture to Architects. Uh, he says, in terms of cost comparison, what is more favorable in terms of traditional or bamboo construction? Have you undertaken any sort of cost comparison? Okay. I have had also a question for you uh, from Elio Nyan from the Gambia again. Uh, what is the moisture content of the bamboo used in construction? Okay. Uh, first, regarding uh, the cost, um, it's uh, based on our uh, past uh, two projects. It's actually uh, at par with uh, conventional for the reason that uh, raw material is actually uh, relatively cheap in com in, uh, in comparison with other uh, conventional uh, with in comparison with steel with concrete, but it's uh, the processing uh, after say from um, harvesting um, to uh, storing to uh, the actual uh, uh, solution, which adds up into costs plus uh, the uh, the labor. Since uh, not all um, um, not all uh, workers are actually uh, really uh, skilled yet. So it's, we have a handful of uh, uh, skilled uh, workers uh, for, uh, for, for each um, uh, project. And then uh, we uh, also engage uh, other parts. So considering intricate uh, projects, um, uh, co labor cost is uh, actually much higher than uh, with conventional. So adding up uh, with, um, with all those uh, factors, uh, for uh, the last time that we did, uh, we, because we always do uh, cost comparison analysis for uh, every project, and uh, it's all, it, for the two projects, uh, it goes with that par still with uh, conventional. And then, um, so that's uh, the, for the first uh, one. And then for the uh, moisture content, uh, for us, uh, we maintain uh, 15 uh, to 18 percent. Okay, thank you very much. I have a question for all panelists. Uh, it's raised by Dulce Blanca Punzanal from ISO TC296. And she also belongs to the World Bamboo Organization. 
Um, I think one of them she, you have raised, uh, it's one about bamboo species, but she raises two uh, interesting questions. One of them is, what government policies, especially in building codes, are either helpful or constrain the use of bamboo as a construction material? So I'm going to start with that question, let the panelists answer, and then I'll raise her second question. So, Song Yi Hao, could you, um, Professor Song Yi Hao, could you... Uh, help uh, Dulce Blanca with a question. Yeah, wait, I'm here. Yeah, that, that's very... <laughs> yeah, that, that's very, very, very good question. That's, that's a great question. Yeah, you know, what the bamboo is confronting in China is kind of codes and regulations for architects and engineers. Say is about the structure, you know, we, we, we still need to do more research on that. Second is about the, the fireproof. So you can say, actually, for the legitimated buildings, very likely, very, very strict constraints against bamboo adopting in as construction materials, I would say. So you can say, my case is most of the projects uh, a kind of open pavilions, no matter the size, you know, it's open, it's not a, a, a building, you know, with fireproof is quite strict for all professionals, including architects, engineers. If anything not good happen, we are confronting kind of penalty, you know, so in my cases, most of them are open space, just kind of cover open space. So it's either temporary building or just open space to that. Very strict codes and regulations. Now, thank you, David. Okay, uh, Mauricio. Uh, I think I think it's like every. Every change, it's always a process. Like I remember, uh, I'll give you an example here in Italy, uh, laminated wood and even wood was not, had no codes less than 20 years ago. It was not conceivable to build with, with wood or to produce laminated wood less than 20 years ago. So year 2000, 2003, 2000. Uh, and nowadays, there's amazing uh, laminated wood industries in Italy, in northern Italy mostly, and also for, for natural, natural constructions of wood. We have a tradition in the north close to Austria. There's, uh, the coats are there, and it's like, every, like if it was there forever. So that's the work as, as the task force uh, we're doing. We're, we're pushing bamboo, uh, especially engineers like, like David, uh, and like other colleagues which are which are present here on the meeting and and not um, is uh, pushing bamboo to be, to have a code a code for construction in bamboo, with bamboo and after that is going to be a, a, a amazing change it's going to be an amazing change from from not having the code and having to do a special process every time and many architects are not using it because it's more difficult etc to then going something that it will become will become uh, more normal also uh, you see um so i think it's just a matter of change we're we're living in the moment of change and now with all these uh, health problems pandemias and all of this stuff uh, i think it's, it's coming to our side in the sense that now people are, are more open uh, now in italy before 2004 when i was working with bamboo starting people saying i was crazy 2000 2012, 2015, people were saying, wow, that's cool. And now they say, we need that. So I think uh, we're going in the right direction. And uh, and it's just a matter of, of working hard. And, and INBAR has done this amazing group of experts, uh, which is the best, I think, not the best strategy to, to find a solution, hopefully, hopefully soon. I, I forgot to mention Kent Harris. I can see you now. And he's part of this group of excellent engineers together with with david working on on this okay okay christian 
Okay. On our own, um, based on our experience here in the Philippines, uh, there are no um, foreign bamboo structures, large bamboo structures. Uh, there are really no uh, uh, building code um, um, encompassing it. So with our uh, experience, it's always uh, a, re- a restraint and a challenge uh, to actually um, on, on every project uh, applying for uh, permits and all. Because it's, uh, as what Mauricio mentioned a while ago, it's, uh, it's something um, new. It's, it's always... Uh, uh, when you introduce uh, something new, something to change, um, and when uh, they are always questioning, but um, I agree that uh, it will take time uh, as long as uh, the, the effort is continuous. And um, uh, but uh, currently, uh, um, uh, I would say here in the Philippines, uh, bamboo uh, structural code or bamboo code here is uh, moving a bit uh, slow, but. Um, also really uh, good to uh, have uh, great groups uh, in the Philippines, such as uh, uh, with uh, Base Pahai, who's really pushing um, um, uh, technical or structural uh, um, acceptance in terms of uh, uh, their technologies. So I think with continuous ef- efforts of um, all the practitioners, um, it will eventually uh, lead, hopefully, to um, uh, having a dedicated uh, code for structures. Excellent. Thank you very much. Now, the next question that I'd mentioned that Dulce Blanca had raised might be one that no one is in a position to answer right now because you might have no examples to provide. So I'm going to raise it. And if any of the three panelists can answer it, just raise your hand. If not, we'll just leave the question open, maybe for another session. And it is, in response to COVID-19, what innovative bamboo structures were designed and built? So do any of the three panelists have an example to share with us? If the answer is no, just then don't raise your hand. I'm guessing nothing there then. Okay, it's, it's a really interesting question. Ah, Mauricio. Several concepts, but nothing that has, has been built yet. Okay, so- will you share with us a concept then? Uh, uh, I, I don't have the images ready, but we're okay. we're, we're doing yeah we're doing some uh, the, the city of Milano uh, has done something that which is we have we have uh, something that's interesting is that the the, um, the office of the major the the guy which is which is responsible for urban development of the city he's also responsible for the agricultural development of the city surroundings. So this matches very nicely with, with bamboo and with plants in general. So we're working on some things about that. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Sounds very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Hope, okay. Hope to show you in the future. Exciting. Look forward to it. We have a question that was raised in Spanish. It's been translated. It was raised by Betsy Vidal from Peru, from Universidad Ricardo Palma de Vidal. And the question I'll read out in English. What type of roof is more cost effective with less maintenance for a bamboo construction? I think it's for the whole panel. So uh, we will change the order. Maybe. Maybe do you want to start, Christian? Okay. Um, Okay. The question is what type of roof panel is... uh cost effective and less maintenance. I would say if, it, if uh, the consideration is cost and uh, maintenance, then uh, the very basic of uh, a hip roof really is uh, um, um, the, the top of it. But um, again, when considering and when designing spaces, you just don't uh, cost and uh, efficiency is, uh, cost is just one factor uh, above all. So. Uh, you need to uh, consider as well, uh, will this give a good experience or will this um, um, uh, contribute something new? So um, I think uh, in terms of um, straight answer is uh, if it's cost effective, uh, a hip roof will do, but um, I don't think um, that's uh, a good uh, design direction, if ever. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Professor Songyi Hao? Do you have uh, anything to add? Seem to have lost him there. Uh, 
Mauricio, do you have anything that you would like to add in terms of effective roofs? Okay, can you repeat me the question, please? Yep, sorry, I'll, I'll just look it up when I have it. Yeah. This, what type of roof is more cost effective with less maintenance for a bamboo construction? Oh, well, there's a, I think it's a very general question because it depends the, the, the geographical location. Um, I think, uh, you know, bamboo is very light, so it needs weight. Uh, it's good to have uh, some weight on top. Uh, and my question will be, I think it will be the, the non-effect, I think less use of concrete as possible will be good, giving, can give the weight with some, in the way. For example, in the Inbar Pavilion 2019, we, um, we used earth and plants. The weight of the earth and, and wet earth was, is great, also for acoustic purposes and for, and for climate control. So I think that, um, yeah, you know, a roof is, is, is like a facade. And in the case of the Inbar Pavilion, was the, the roof was the biggest surface. So I, th I would use another natural material. I would suggest to use other natural materials. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Professor Song Yihao, have you uh, managed to get better reception now to answer the question of type of roof cover? And according to my experience, most of most uh, most of the projects are, are not ordinary buildings. They are pavilion, so that the isolation or other function for the regular roof, uh, we do not think of that for the projects. So mainly the, the structure part is bamboo, and then ordinary. I mean, in, in either in asphalt shingles or waterproof membranes just kind of ordinary you know it's so i don't know actually i i, I don't think what's the, the meaning for for the for the you know, for 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 the budget of the roof or cost of the roof it means something for the whole thing okay okay thank you very much Okay, um, there are a couple for further questions for Mauricio. Um, one of them is from uh, Patricio Rosero from Ecuador. And uh, he asks regarding uh, how do you achieve pieces of bamboo of greater than six meters? Because you seem to be using... Uh, 12 meters to pieces. Are you joining them or are you just sourcing 12 meter piece uh, elements? Yes, uh, uh, we're connecting them. Like uh, for the Imbar Pavilion, 32 meters uh, was, was 32 meters um, span. So we were interlocking them, of course, not all, all in the same time, at the same point, but we were interlocking them in different positions, not to have a, a, a breaking point. Uh, we used long, the, I think we were, there were mostly eight, eight to 10 meters. Yeah, because we managed to do a, a night transportation of the bamboo elements. Um, it depends also of, on, on the local regulations for transporting large, medium or small, you know, um, if you have to, if you, if you were going to in, import bamboo, then you have to think on the side of the containers but uh, nowadays uh, we work hardly and not to import bamboo import bamboo but to work with local species uh, here in italy it was quite simple the pieces were four meters and 50 or 50 for the bamboo flower and then for the other pavilions here in milan i was using the size a little less than six meters because i imported it from a container from colombia and it was six meters the container is a little less than six meters can be the bamboo, the, the length of the bamboo should be less, a little less than six meters. Yeah, I think the question was mainly regarding the Imbar Pavilion. Yeah, so, so Imbar Pavilion. What length were those? Interlocked, interlocking, of course, yeah. Yeah, but what was the, the length of the basic ones? 12 meters? Yeah. Or were they, what sizes did you source? Yeah, 10, 10 to 12. 10 to 12. 
Yeah. And then you interlock them. Yeah. Okay. But but never never in the same in the same position. So it's not that all no. of them. There were 18, 18 bamboo poles. Each arch is made out of 18 bamboo poles, eight to ten centimeters diameter, and they were interlocked in in different positions. So that's why it's not one length because one length will make so that we had actually six, eight, and ten meters length of bamboos, and we were interlocking in different positions in order to kind of a, in a rotation uh, rotation um, uh, geometry in order to avoid uh, a, break, a, a straight breaking point or connection. Okay. Here is a question that is being uh, raised by Mario Carag from the Philippines for um, Christian. He says, I'm curious about the connection between the glass and uh, bamboo on the MLR polo pavilion structure and how these connections can withstand a super typhoon especially in the philippines okay uh thank you for uh, the question um the connection for uh the glass is um uh it's connected uh on the wood uh on the wood uh, planks and it's framed there so uh it's built uh, on ground and then uh raised uh, elevated uh, uh during construction as a uh, uh, finished panels and uh, all the connections uh, are a uh, bolt uh, connection for that. So uh, this uh, uh, acrylic glass uh, rests on, uh, on wood panels uh, directly on the facade. Okay, excellent. Well, um, I was just reminded that um, today's session runs a bit longer. So I had said it would be finishing in 10 minutes time. Actually, we have still a bit more like 20 or 25 minutes. Um, so I would like to invite my co-hosts uh, in attendance to the today's event to join in if they have any questions for the panel. Uh, and um, yeah, if, if they want to share any curiosities, any doubts that have been raised in today's uh, session. So I don't know who would like to join. Maybe I who are Liu or anyone else or my co-hosts. Do you have any questions? Yeah, but I, I can um, step in. Okay. You, Clint. You knew I you knew I would step in, right? Uh, I um, can always count on you. I, I'm actually um I'm going to ask a couple or a question uh, of, of Professor Song. Um, I've been texting with some of my colleagues who are watching this, and and so this was a question that was raised about the the the, the beautiful pavilion, uh, the, the 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 lounge, and the question was, you know, looking at the images, it seems that from a structural perspective that there was a massive column in the middle, and that much of the the flowing open. Um, curved bamboo may have been largely decorative rather than structural. And I'm wondering if you could comment on that, either confirm or, or, or kind of explain what the structure looked like. And um, additionally, what the foundation may have looked like. Uh, obviously, lateral loads and even uplift on such a structure would be would be a concern. And I apologize for the technical nature of the question, um, but that's the way it is. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ken. Uh, could I just uh, share the screen again for that picture, especially for the diagram of the whole thing? That's quite easy to, to, to see how it uh, looks like. Yes, the column right in the middle of a small unit with uh, the size of 5 meters by 5 meters. It's something like that. So it's not a large span or large depth for 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 a thing. It's just only twenty five square meters. So we have the the central. You can see here if you can see my <laughs> arrow. You can see here we have the main column goes up, and the second layer of columns of bamboo just spread just like the umbrella. 
So, yes, it's kind of, you know, just like chambers, but buildings, they integrated the architectural, or the beauty of architecture, and also the beauty of structure. So, bamboo is much like timber. So, we are trying to find a way to express the beauty of this material. So, that's maybe the, you know, the, the south or, or general idea and concept of an architect, because we are architects. So, but still, it works. We work together with structural engineers. They do the the, the simulation, or calculation, and a lot more things. And then we work together out with this material. And you can say the 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 the, the, the foundation. You know, it's definitely concrete thing. So we have also. To to the right page, we have very detailed design for all the buildings, for the joints, yeah, with a with a concrete foundation and also you know spread out and also with uh, a lot more things. So that picture, I, I think, just show, yeah, you know, what, yeah, yeah, maybe the answer to to the question. Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you. So I just created the sharing. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Well, um, I have a question. If no other panelists uh, are going to chip in for the moment, uh, for the three panelists, and it's more to do in terms of um, acceptance. Um, firstly. I wanted to know from Song's uh, experience with uh, the community in China, uh, and in, in my limited travel around China, I have I always noticed that there isn't a lot of um, bamboo structures, despite that there's a lot of bamboo industry in China is so important. So um, I'm, I was interested, really, really, what was the reception of the community uh, within the village? And what was the acceptance in the further afield? What is the feeling? Is, is there a growing interest now in China about round bamboo structures? That's a good question. Actually, the, the villagers, not only villagers, but com common people, not accept the, the bamboo from the very beginning. Yeah, they will say it's too much temporary thing, you know. It, it will be long lasting like concrete or steel structure or even bricks. So the villagers, they, they, they are, you know, a little bit away from the bamboo thing. That, yeah, that's the truth. But we have a very low budget, very limited period of time for construction. And very, you know, a lot more support by the industry, bamboo industry. And we have, I mean, my, my office and also my school have experience to cooperate with those manufacturers of bamboo or bamboo industry providers, you know, these kind of guys. So we can finish that job only with bamboo. We have only 45 days from the very beginning of design to the accomplishment of the whole thing so the, the villagers from the very beginning okay it's cheap you know <laughs> much cheaper than ordinary uh, it's fast you know only takes a couple of weeks or, or, or you know it, it's okay so they they accept it at the very beginning not because they love bamboo <laughs> because cheap fast and this kind of thing but after the accomplishment of the, the, the pavilion, we have, we, we always, as human beings, we have this kind of fundamental feeling for something beautiful or something, no matter in, in Western, I mean, European countries or, or in China, we have kind of common, common thing, you know, where we see, okay, the beauty inside and also it's comfort to stay and it, it's, it's, you know, gather a lot more tourists to say this. to bring some money to the villagers. So it's great thought. This could be kind of materials, kind of landmarking architect. So, so, so 
that's that's kind of procedure, you know, not from the beginning. Gradually, they accept that a positive effect on the mindset and on the perception of uh, most Filipinos from uh, from clients uh, to other designers to uh, the builders on site. Because um, at first, of of, of course, uh, there is there are doubts uh, because it's something new to them. It's something uh, they've never um, uh, tried. It's something that um, uh, they don't see or uh, um, they don't believe that uh, really is possible. But um, um, with uh, what I've what we have experienced is uh, after implementation, a lot of uh, people um, uh, really commented that oh, I want to design uh, our own. Also, I want to design uh, that kind of building. I want to design using bamboo since it's possible. So. Uh, I think it's really with, uh, again, have a snowball effect on uh, the industry, on uh, the local um, uh, um, local um, uh, industry as well. Meaning a lot of uh, people will start to believe what they see. They, 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 especially here in the Philippines, they just don't um, um, believe uh, everything if it's just in paper, everything if it's just in um, research, in uh, in drawings and all, it's when they see that uh, they really uh, believe it. So uh, building and implementing uh, structures uh, is really important part of uh, um, the social acceptance here. Okay, that's very interesting. And then last, a similar sort of question for Mauricio, but I, I, I would probably elaborate that Mauricio, you have experience of working, how dare I say, in mainly two countries, Italy and uh, in China as well. Um, so in Italy, being a country where historically bamboo is a foreign material, um, how sort of has been the, the reception in Italy to, to this, you know, strange technology? Yes, um of course, it's it's uh, at the beginning was quite strange, and, and it was the probably the the interest of something new. Talking to you fifteen years ago, whatever. But as I mentioned you, uh, as I mentioned before, in general, not only to you, but I mean as a general observation, I I mentioned and during my presentation, I showed the fact that now we have uh, several bamboo plantations in Italy. Um, is becoming a, an interesting green investment uh, to have bamboo plantations as, and of course having the the, the, um, the basic material from there you can you can many other things can be developed the industry for example right of of products etc and in Italy and mostly Milan being a um, uh, fashion this fashion capital design capital uh, recognized in the world, uh, always experimenting has been part of our, our, our of our way of working, and so uh, bamboo has been now is being now very very become a very attractive uh, new material, and as you can see, the largest labyrinth bamboo labyrinth in the world is here in Italy. It's in Parma, not far away from Milan, and and it was done by a, by a crazy but genius. Um, a graphic designer is his own his own passion in his his labyrinth, and he chose he chose bamboo for for some reasons, and and it has become a place where 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 the bamboo culture in Italy is being growing. Um, so in Italy, it's kind of unbelievable, but there is the Italian Bamboo Association was created in the 1990s. Um, um, so uh, there has been some uh, probably Italy had been a place of, of cu curious people and, and and like Marco Polo long time ago and relationship with China relationship we have Italians in Colombia having in restaurants and people Italians all over the world and you you can find Italians in in, in China everywhere uh, it's people that are always kind of op open to 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 new uh, opportunities and, and like with the coffee my example is with coffee you know even i come from colombia but if when i go to colombia uh, having drinking an italian cafe is always a nice thing and they don't even have a, a, a coffee plant in italy by but they became they made coffee become part of the culture and this is kind of a and this is the i talk about bamboo here in italy and uh, and it's something that is starting to happen bamboo is starting to become Ita italian in a way 
bamboo is universal. Bamboo is from everybody, and in, 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 it's a plant, and it's from. And, and Italy has has adopted it already. We have plantations. We have architects, and I'm I'm, I'm Italian ambassador of design thanks to my bamboo work. So so uh, I think it's a, a, an evolution, and I'm really happy of making part of it. Uh, it's a kind of a yeah a pioneeristic work here, and and I'm glad to be part of a, this triangle which I called Colombia, China, and Italy, which each one helps uh, helps each other. And uh, for in terms of bamboo culture, yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, I have a question that not all members of the panel have to answer. Any any member of the panel can answer if you want to. Um, it's a question from Jin Bei 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 from China Xi'an University of Architecture and Technology. How to popularize bamboo structures in two and three story residential buildings? Are there any practical projects now? And how can bamboo be used for beams and floors? From the panel, want to uh, address this question. If, I, if, if, if uh, Luis Felipe is here, I will suggest him to be the one who can answer if, he's, uh, if he agrees. I think he's an expert. Or maybe we park this question for, for the time when he joins us. I don't know. Oh, he was here a long, uh, maybe he had to leave, I'm sorry. Maybe, maybe he's going he's gone to sleep. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. I forgot about that. It's one of the few times I'm in the lucky part of the world for these meetings. Uh, well, so I, I can just say uh, some little words. Uh, I think uh, there's there's a lot of a, a, a lot of um, examples, and and one of that is a work that Luis Felipe is doing in in Philippines, of course, and and uh, there's. Um, so a way to bamboo for two floors is, is actually very good, very, very, and probably very competitive in terms of cost as well. Uh, but it depends. Uh, the question comes from from which country? Bay, Bay is from where? Sorry. Uh, China. Ah, from China. All right. Xi'an. Xi'an. Sorry. So, uh, yeah, I think the main problem is that of the, is that of the codes, the construction codes, right? In, yeah, in China. which is many of the because questions Colombia, coming back to this. Because Colombia, Philippines, Ecuador, they have coasts nowadays. Um, so the, I think that the, the main, uh, the main, uh, how do you say, uh, thing blocking it is 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 the work that you, da David, uh, you're, you're working hardly with uh, with all the all of your your expert team uh, codes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I suppose it is a question for future sessions, and I, I will we'll leave it there to to address in a future session. There's a question for Christian, uh, which says, based on your own experiences, what advice can you give to architectural students so as to encourage them to utilize bamboo and other indigenous materials? And this is a question from Dulce Punsalan again. Okay. Um, I think it's... Uh First is uh, you really need to uh, believe with the potential of the material before uh, you push through because uh, exploring uh, the material is, uh, is not a smooth road, meaning you'll encounter a lot of uh, challenges, a lot of uh, problems, uh, solutions to, to deal with. And uh, it's really um, with uh, uh, sticking with uh, your full interest and uh, passion with the material that uh, you can develop uh, uh, such um, I mean, uh, developing your design skills and all. And um, also, uh, I think it's really accepting the material if you really want to uh, push it. It's accepting the material with uh, both its strength and um, its flaws and uh, tr uh, utilizing it, translating it into uh, something that uh, can uh, show um, um, a new type of uh, design, a new type of architecture that uh, only is uh, visible or will be distinct really with uh, because of the properties and the characteristics of bamboo. So I think um, it's really with uh, starting with um, um, uh, uh, embrace the material uh, and then develop it and be prepared with uh, all uh, the uh, uh, challenges and uh, solutions to deal along the process. It will be a fun experience, yeah. Okay. Uh, another question from Mauricio. This one is from Jorge Franco in Colombia. 
And he wants to know if you use some sort of architectural pre-dimensioning to determine the number of combs uh, you're going to use per ele element. Uh, so his question directly in Spanish says, ¿Utilizan predimensionamiento arquitectónico? Do you use pre-dimensioning pre for the number of combs yes, per element? Yes, we do. Um, actually, um, I felt the need since, since mostly the beginning of my work to have a multidisciplinary approach to the, to the design. Uh, just doing the architectural architectural design, uh, the risk. That's why in the presentation I showed the renders in the final construction, which are basically very very close to each other. We do, of course, modeling and we do mockups. But during the design, we use we use some structural software for analysis and design. Uh, there, there is some uh, in Italy. There's possible to have a um, a, gra a gra uh, how to say a diploma for architecture and for engineering, but there is also a diploma which is architecture and engineering together. It's still five years, but the architects are more technical. And there's I have a couple of people in my office that have this background, and we use uh, SAP 2000 uh, for for. Uh, it's already uh, a way of having some control on the design and making sure that our design is, is going on in the right direction. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's very interesting because this question sort of laps up with, I think, what will probably be the, la the last one. And it's repeated, but several people have uh, asked me this and I've held back on this question because I've, if you, I feel that it's more about architecture today, but, uh, You've opened the door to this question, Mauricio, which is um, Raul Hidalgo from Ecuador asks, uh, what software for structural calculations do you, you use for bamboo? Um, uh, it's mainly a question, I think, for engineers, but now you've opened the door to the question. Maybe you might want to uh, share some thoughts about it. Always me? Yeah. Yes. Well, you opened the one, the one that opened the door. But if Christian wants to add or, or Professor... <laughs> on other side, uh, it's also... A so, yeah, yeah, I wants to join in. He can certainly can. Yeah. On other side, is the same with the Mauritius of uh, uh, SAP 2000. It's the same thing that we use. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, yeah. I think... Yeah. Song. So yeah. Okay. Yes. Show yeah. sure, sure yes. us your work I, I, with. You can see the, the, do you the use structural here? calculation. Yeah. Model in 3DSS. It's kind of structural software. You're quite right. Yeah. We we are using that. We got the the, the architectural model in Rhino and then transfer to that in 3D3S. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sure there will be lots of questions relating to this. Okay. Um, it's, I think, time that we sort of wrap up. I really want to uh, thank our panelists and everyone in attendance uh, and our co-hosts and for their participation and I think Christian, Mauricio and Professor Song work in terms of considering context, wor working with communities, uh, developing technology and techniques, uh, thinking about how the projects are environmentally conscious, how they are durable and well engineered and um, and I think they really are some very, very interesting examples of how beautiful and um, accomplished bamboo comb architecture can be. Uh, it was very exciting. Keep on smiling, keep on smiling, keep on smiling. Keep on smiling. <laughs> Hi, Martin, I saw you. Now I got you. Okay, Sixto. Yeah, thank you.
Thank you, you can wait, wait for organizing, David. Amazing work. Thank you so much. Thank you.